Hello, this is Rank Carcass, and uh, this is a quick video involving uh, my 1940 Axis and Allies Global Table that I originally built it for, but then eventually we built it for uh, uh, Historical Board Gaming's uh, 1936 to 1945 4 foot by 8 foot map. It fits both, and uh, yeah, as you can see, that's the reason. I designed a covered table crawling on my table right now. All right, so I'm going to go over the quick gist of it. So this whole table is basically built in a bar style. It's 42 inches to the top of this. The reason for that is you get yourself a leaning rail. The bottom is 35 and a half inches. So that way you can sit with a bar stool, which we've got here. Got a few bar stools. And uh, you can either sit or stand, and you can do so for hours on end. Now, you're gonna look at the central frame here. So what I've got here is the inner box with the uh, 45 degree angles in the corner. These things, that's just to keep it square so it doesn't wiggle around. And then these posts sticking up right here, I got one there, one here. Those are actually the legs. And you'll see on the other end, I have two more posts and that uh, piece of plywood at the end. That's just the legs coming up. And they're actually just screwed into the side of this. That's the only thing holding this thing up. Although we did, for stability reasons, add in this 40... It's 45 degree on each end. That way you could push it from the ends without feeling like it was going to wobble off. And uh, you'll see on the between the legs there, there's a sheet of plywood. And that plywood holds it all together. That way it won't wobble side to side, for instance. Or... Nice and stable. I've had four or five guys leaning on this thing and it's never come down yet. Okay, so we built that. And then we had to, we wanted to have a tabletop that uh, we could put a cover on, either felt or vinyl or something. That way it made it nice and soft. So uh, we actually put these side rails on and all they are, It's just L bracketed on in three or four spots around this whole table. I don't know if you can see that properly or not. And then all these are cheap shelves, prefab, Home Depot. One was too long, I just cut her off and ironed on a piece. So yeah, screwed her on. There you can see the uh, plywood that's holding the legs together so that they don't wobble side to side. And the cross bracing, just one on each end, just so that when you push on it from the end, it doesn't uh, try to collapse and fall down. And uh, this little platform on the bottom, hopefully that will eventually turn into a nice, neat cabinet so I can get rid of those games on the floor. All right, so when you make this, I recommend you give it an extra eighth of an inch of space on the inside on all four sides, both sides, both ends. That way you have enough leeway to slide your board in and out with or without a cover. And you get that little bit extra space so that your four foot by eight foot game board sits in there nicely. All right, so uh, now I'm just going to gently put the game board on Thank you. 
drop. So there is the game board. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just a piece of four foot by eight foot, three quarter inch board. Doesn't really matter what you use. I bought a piece of sanded plywood because uh, we, we were figuring we might uh, want to uh, just stain and lacquer it, but instead we decided to go with this vinyl. It's really cheap. I think we paid 20 bucks for it, the whole thing, over at a fabric store. Here. Let me show you the bottom of it here. So, oh, I did. You can't see anything. As I just laid it flat on the floor, put the sheet of plywood on, took all the air bubbles out. Don't stretch it, just lean it flat. Because if you stretch this stuff, it stays stretched and you can change the shape of it. And just nail it with a staple. And way too many, that way it doesn't move. Easy peasy. All right. So that is pretty much the basics of the table. Now, uh, the reason we made it this big is that we could play global on it originally. Now the nice thing is, if you want, you just put it on one side, everybody's got their little space around it, you're good. Or if you want to play the big game, you just lay your out. Never get them in the right order, do you? Want to play the big game? Lay it out like that. There you go. Lots of room all the way around. I can have his stuff right where he's sitting. Perfect. And if you really feel like it, you just slide it to one end. With that vinyl on there. You get yourself a nice rolling surface. It's not too loud. Perfect. Just like a giant dice tray. So if you want, you can use this for other games. I don't know what, but that's your choice. So, right here. Another reason I like this table if it's the big game, my new favorite. If you ever roll these up, do not lay them flat on the floor. They don't like that. sit for about 15 20 minutes and the corners are all leave lay themselves flat perfect just like that and if you get all inventive and you want to have something around the side because you don't want anybody putting their drinks on your map lots of room for this lots of room for this lots of room for these country sheets whole kit and caboodle for newbies and quick references fire it all right there these folks these slots will fit two and double stack them fit two slide them in the back leave them open like this your call anyway hopefully that helps if you uh have any more questions or whatnot feel free to leave me a comment and i will try to get back to you okay hopefully this oh
The most important part, the cover. I just use a couple of bookends that I have lying around the house. And a sheet of 3 8 plywood because it's super cheap and it keeps the cats off. Voila, game's paused for weeks on end if need be. That simple. I got three 20 pound cats and it keeps them out, so should be good enough for you. Unless you got giant apes running around your house. Anyway, have yourself a good day. Hope that helps.